Uh, firstly, the histories of the two communities are, although in some ways they're parallel, in other ways they're quite different. For example, in the United, in Canada here, uh, the Ukrainians were a major uh, demographic group uh, for many, many years. They were the fourth largest demographic group in the country after the British groups, the French and the Germans for most of the 20th century. And they were over, only overtaken by other groups like the Italians in the 1970s, the Chinese in the 2001 census, and the most recent census, uh, I think it's the 2006 census, by Native Canadian Indians. Now they've slipped to about 10th. But for most of the, the uh, 20th century, they were the fourth largest group in the country. And when it came to uh, the crisis of the 1960s, when uh, Canada was in danger of splitting up into a, a, an independent Quebec and the rest, um, the federal government, uh, who, which was reluctant to turn to the German community as representatives of Canadian ethnics because of the, the two wars, especially the Second World War, which had just ended, they turned to the next largest group, which, which was the Ukrainian group, and appointed Yaroslav Rudnitsky to the Royal Commission on Bilingualism and Biculturalism. And partly out of that royal commission came the whole idea of multiculturalism and a multicultural Canada. So this is very important in Canadian history. And most uh, Ukrainian-Canadian scholars and intellectuals are aware of this. On the other hand, in the United States, the Ukrainians were always a relatively small group. They didn't have such a high profile in Canada. They didn't have the political influence in Canada. In the United States, the largest Slavonic group was not the Ukrainians, like in Canada, but rather the Poles, of which I think there were about 9.5 million by the year 2000. So 9.5, or something like that, 9.5 million. Anyhow, they were by far the largest Slavonic group. And just as the Ukrainians in Canada led the charge uh, to uh, balance things out, for example, to um, fight against Soviet propaganda, denigrating such groups, so the Poles in the United States took on that, that role. So in some ways, it's not quite correct to compare Ukrainian Canadians with the Ukrainian Americans. Rather, the comparison should be Ukrainian Canadians and Polish Americans, because the Poles were the biggest Slavonic group there, just as we were the biggest Slavonic group here. So that's on the demographic level. With regard to scholarship, again, there's a huge difference. In the United States, the emphasis was always on Ukraine. There's very little study of the Ukrainian Americans, a handful of books, nothing more than that. Whereas in Canada, we had a real flourishing of scholarship on Ukrainian Canadian institutions and culture throughout the 1970s and 1980s. And this goes back even further, right back to the 1950s. And it continues even today with the work of outstanding scholars like or Oris Martinovich uh, in Western Canada. So yes, there's differences on both levels.